I believe the two scariest lies on the earth right now that are so prevalent are number one, you are a good person. And number two, because God is a loving God, he will not punish. I believe those are lies that are told every day all around our country and people are believing them. Number one, that you're a good person, that we're all good people. Every funeral you go to, you hear people say, he was a good person, she was a good person, they're in a better place. And we have this belief that, you know what? I do more good than bad, and I, I do a lot of good deeds. I think by nature, I'm a good person. The reason why that's a lie is because God says so. And in Romans chapter three, he explains that all of us are sinners. None of us are good. In fact, in, in Romans chapter three, he, he says that all, both Jews and Greeks, are all under sin. As it is written, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they've become worthless. No one does good, not even one. In, in verse 23, it says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay, you've got the world and probably many of your friends and maybe even your own heart and feelings telling you, I'm a good person. And then you have the word of God where God says, well, when I look at the world, I look down and I don't see anyone righteous, not even one. I see their sin and I see, he says, and the wages of sin is death. They all deserve this punishment. You've got to remember the things that God has done in history, like when he looked at the world in, in Genesis chapter six, and he says, gosh, I'm grieved. Look at the world, they're all so evil. I'm just gonna flood the world and destroy them all. I'm sure there were people on the earth back then saying, I'm a good person. I feel like I'm a good person. All my friends say I'm a good person, but God looks at the world and says, there, there's no one righteous there. I'm gonna destroy them, except for Noah. Uh, I'll save him and his family. Everyone else, I'm gonna flood. I'm gonna destroy the whole world. You see, and it goes with that second lie that is so destructive, where nowadays people are saying, how could a loving God punish? There's no such thing as hell. I mean, God's not really gonna punish me at the end of my life. Well, well again, look at his actions. Would a loving God flood the whole earth? Yes, he would because he's a God of justice and a God of wrath also. And again, you look, at, you look at the book of Revelation, it's all about, look at what this loving God does. In Revelation 20, it says in verse 10, it says the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So to say God is not a God who would punish, here he is tormenting someone, you know, the beast specifically and the false prophet, you know, is saying, you know what, they, they will be tormented day and night forever and ever, that's God. And then it says later on in verse 15, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so you have this lie that everyone's telling you you know what, if God's a loving God, he, he, he wouldn't punish. He, and yet you look at the book of Revelation and people say, well, that's, that's old school. No, it's the book of Revelation. It's talking about the things that are going to happen. And so at some point we've got to say, who's the authority? Is it the culture nowadays that says, you know what, there's no punishment for sin. God's a loving God. He's not a God of wrath anymore. He's changed, you know, or is it the word of God that says, you know what, yes, he is a loving God but he's also God of wrath. There will be a day of punishment. Look, these are two very destructive lies. Number one, that you're a good person. And number two, that God does not punish. We have to look at God's word and say, well, that's contrary to what this book says. And because of that, we all need this salvation from God. So the world's trying to teach you, the Satan himself is trying to teach you that look, there's no punishment and you're a good person. This way you don't have to be saved from anything. And what the Bible says is no, we need Jesus. We need what he did on the cross for us. We need to be saved by him.